Uh, very good, how are you? Fine. A bit of tiredness is coming, but it's the second day, I think it's normal. Too, um, too much noise. Yeah. Is it your first NAM or you was already several times here? Oh, many times. Many times. Yeah. For me personally, I've been here, this is my 47th NAM. Wow. But for, for Solaris, it's uh, oh, nine years, I think. Um, you are a sound designer, yeah. you are, but you are, you are also a synth manufacturer. Yes. How does it comes that you from a sound designer comes to the synth manufacturer? Wow. Well, I uh, had a long path between starting with Moog a long time ago, and then sequential circuits, and then Yamaha, and then Korg doing the wave station. and. Uh, uh, there was after that point I decided to take a job with a German company, Creamware. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. And uh, I started to do plugins for them. And that was my first experience with soft software. Because before that, only hardware. And when, uh, when that was over, the Creamware engineers, uh, after the company was no more, he said, you know, John, you should really make your own keyboard. And I thought, no, this is, that's crazy, you know. But they kept reminding me. At every Mesa, I would come over to Germany, and they, we'd see each other. You need to make your own keyboard. So finally, there became this opportunity in Germany to do it. So we just said, OK. And uh, the guys from Sonic Core, who bought the Creamware uh, intellectual property, had this idea, so we just proceeded from that. Okay. And I will say, doing uh, synthesizer sound and design for all those other companies, you, you're always frustrated because what you see in your vision, it's held back by other people in the room. Yeah. Now, sometimes there's a reason for that, like financial, probably, but to be able to take a vision into a reality was a great opportunity for me. So that's what I that's what I did. Is, is it a, a, a hard task for moving from a sound designer to a developer? Is it a hard task to make your dream soon possible? Because well, to any young developer outside, is it? It's it was crazy because uh, I had no idea how many little details were involved with the hardware side of things. When I worked for all the big companies, I didn't see that part of the company because I was just in the sound design and the development side of the, of the front panel. So one of the things that Creamware guys did was they said, well, we've built, they had built a, a small keyboard product, I forget. So they had some experience with it. but. I learned as we went a lot. Yeah, it was really difficult. And as I was telling somebody else, just one millimeter can change a lot of things. Yeah. And I, all the mechanical design stuff, I had no idea. So it was a real learning curve. Yeah. And you first, uh, your synthesizer is called Solaris. Yes. What was the target of it? Or what, what do you want to have it? What different order synthesizer doesn't have? Well, I had two, two things that have always been on my mind, and one of them was to have great sound quality. And the second one is uh, the use, the ease of use, the user interface. And that's something that I was very proud of on all my sequential products. When I was at sequential, I was responsible for all the factory sounds of, of all the products. But I also helped do the panel layout, and it was always important to to think about as a musician, because I started out as a musician, not a not an engineer, and I always was thinking about how it could be better to use it musically. So those two things were important to me: the ease of use and the sound quality. And at one point, we had an opportunity to make it have more polyphony, but lower quality audio. It's a trade-off, and I said no. I I want less vo voices and higher quality sound. Yeah. And then, 
because my uh, experience designing for creamware products, you can make as many parameters on software as you want. But when I thought to translate it to hardware, how do you do that and not make it crazy? Uh, not make it too much uh, what we call menu diving? Yeah. So I thought, well, I'll just put everything in a logical group, like a display for oscillators, a display for the filters, you know, separate displays, and that'll make it easier to find your way around. So that's, that's how it came out. What kind of synthesis do you uh, Solaris offers, or was it important for you to have these this features? Or well, we knew that if I wanted to do something this ambitious, it had to be done di digitally. So it's all, it's all digital emulations of analog circuitry, and uh, so we have modeling of different oscillators and different filters, and. I like to say that maybe the name isn't always the perfect, like if it says Prophet 5, maybe there's a little difference, or mini mode, but the idea with the names, like I have uh, Oberheim, Ober, you know, names enough to give you, the user, uh, uh, a link mentally, what kind of sound we are looking to do. And uh, we also was very nice, uh, from Waldorf to allow me to use the, the old uh, wave, uh, wave samples from their first microwave product so with their permission. So uh, we wanted to have analog sounds and wavetable and it does sample loading. You can load samples. Uh, I have the Provit VS wave shapes, the original ones, because I, I created all those. Uh, and what else? And we have a Provit 5 and a Mini Moog emulation in there. So, we're trying to bring all that into a product, and this was designed in 2007 originally. So now you see a lot of that and all the other instruments, yeah. multiple filters and things, but... It's pretty impressive, the setup. Yeah. And um, if you see it, it's, it's, it's today a modern synth, or the, 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 the interface. If you see the interface, it's a modern synth, also in 2020. It doesn't well, look old. I, that's fortunate for me, yeah. 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 And you use modern technology still inside. If you... But... Yeah. Um, well, the the if main you, update has been the OLED displays. Would you do, the, would you do the, the Solaris again in 2020 if you are in the same position like uh, in the past? Oh, you mean if, if, I, if, I, if it was me now, yeah. but then... Yeah. Oh yeah, but probably even more with more possibilities. Yes, of course. Yes, but uh, there's a lot of learning that happened in those ten years, whatever. And you are not only to showing you Solaris here on NAM 2020, but you have some two concepts of right. new products. Two new products. One of them is uh, the same keyboard with uh, same product without a keyboard and without the ribbon and without the joystick or wheels. It's uh, the Solaris tabletop over here. And uh, it's uh, virtually the same hardware, so the sound quality is still there. And uh, I had a lot of, uh, not requests, but people asking about, can you make a smaller version? And. Uh, I had a chance to talk with Axel Hartman some years ago. I said, um, we, we were just chatting and I said, do you think I should cut it down to like a, a one or two, you know, display? And he said, well, what are, what are your main features? And I told him that what I told you, sound quality and, and the ease of use. And he said, oh, well, if those are important, I wouldn't change it, don't change it. So when it came time to think about reducing the size, I wanted to keep the user interface, yeah. and so that's what we have here. So it's this, uh, you do it, uh, did it with Axel Hartmann, or no, no you no, did it just chatting with him? No. Yeah, because Axel Hartmann is one of the famous synthesizer designers. Yeah. He's everywhere. Yes, yes. But this is so your design. Yes. And um, if 
you compare the norm, normal salaries to the desktop version or the, this new rack version, uh, the de desktop version here, uh, what? So there are no differences. Only no the difference. keyboard, which is right. Yeah, yeah there. Older displays. Oh, well, oh yeah, okay. So the OLED displays are new, yeah. and uh, this is a slightly different LCD yeah. to reflect uh, to better match the color. But the rest is everything the same, just the keyboard, which is right. not of it. Right. Right. And, um, so, and the price. It's, not the price, but uh, you said to me before it's not not sure that you're bringing it out. It's more a project or more a concept. Well, I. That's more true about the the voice expansion, for now. But yeah, I, th I think I think we will uh, from the response at the show. I think we will be producing this yeah. in about six months. Okay. Yeah. And it will be uh, a lot of a lot of cheaper, or how is it compared to price point? Well, uh, it's about a thousand dollars cheaper. Okay. So, so it's uh, how much? Well, this is uh, in the U.S. forty-two hundred. So this will be like 3,200. Okay. And uh, the other con the concept you have is the uh, voice expansion? Right. This just houses the voice board. So obviously, you don't need much. Um, and uh, connected by MIDI, you can expand it from a, a 10 voice system to a 20 voice system. Okay. And that's not so important maybe for a lot of synthesizer pat patches, but we have now a new software coming out with multi-mode. We'll have a four-part multi-mode. And when, when you do that, you start to need more voices. Okay. Yeah. So are you adding, uh, it's just to adding... Uh, Eight, more, ten voices more. Ten voices voice yeah. more. And so it's not an individual synth, it's just well, an expansion. No, uh, it could be with, a, with an editor done. So that's the plan, is to have an editor for it. And it okay. could be a standalone product, but... I don't have any good idea about that yet. So it's a bit uh, the idea of Sonic Core, I think. It yes. looks like a bit. Yes, uh, that was the plan. So we'll see how it goes. Okay. Uh, thank you, John. Yeah, thank I'm looking you. forward if this happens. Yes. So that's a probably. Yes. The expansion. Let's see. Yes. And maybe next year, then uh, the NAM show we have. Super booth. Or super booth, yeah. Big thanks, John. Thank you. And have a good uh, NAM 2020. Yes, thank you. The next two, two days. Thank you. Big thanks. And uh, see you soon in one of the next videos. Bye.